Lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. When we look at the qualifications of leadership and the Lord's ministers in Timothy and in Titus, we see one requisite is having a good reputation with those outside the church, with the world, with the unsaved. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. You can always bet that the media and unsaved people will point fingers and say, he did this, she did that. Now, what somebody did before they were born again, that doesn't matter. They're new creations in Christ. If, however, a believer falls into serious sin and it becomes publicly known, and the world has the goods on them, we're told by Paul, or we're told by the Holy Spirit, speaking through Paul's writing, that they cannot return to leadership or ministry. This is the standard and teaching of the New Testament. There are those who have tried to say the following in their ignorance or in their attempted manipulation to justify what's wrong. Well, God forgave David. First of all, we are under the new covenant, not the law. The new covenant says there's a higher standard of righteousness because we have a better covenant. Our righteousness must even exceed that of the Pharisees and so forth. Not that David was a Pharisee. They didn't exist yet in the days of David. But we are called to a higher standard of righteousness because we have the imputed righteousness of Christ. So first of all, the New Testament supersedes the old for believers in terms of what we do. Secondly, it is a false comparison. David was from the tribe of Judah, the royal tribe, the regal tribe. The high priest, the Levitical priesthood, the clergy were from the tribe of Levi. A high priest could not be a king. A king could not be a high priest. When one king burned incense, God smote him with leprosy. Later on, there was a high priest in Hodokonis in the Hasmonean period who made himself a king, but it was wrong. Kings had to be from the tribe of Judah. Clergy had to be from the tribe of Levi. David was restored to a political office, a royal office, a regal office. He was not restored to a Levitical office as a clergyman or as a Levite, as a priest. It is a completely false comparison. The world will lie about believers. The media does this continually, misrepresents us as being crazy people and things like this because we don't believe in Darwinism or something like that. The world will bend over backwards to justify Islam. It'll bend over backwards to justify homosexuality and abortion, but it will bend over even further to try to ridicule Christians. The world's going to do that. We should not give them ammunition. Jimmy Swaggart has no biblical right to remain in ministry. None. Jim Baker has no biblical right to remain in ministry. None. If they really repented, they would bear the fruits of repentance and get out of the ministry. They have no right to be in it because the world can always point the finger of accusation. And what the world says will be factually true. If the world lies about you, it's one thing. God will defend us and vindicate us. But when the world can say things that are true, we should not be in ministry or in leadership. Let that be a warning to all of us, including myself. If there is a major moral issue of which someone is generally guilty, there's a problem. I'm not talking about people going to prison for their faith. I'm talking about people going to prison for embezzlement. I'm not talking about lies. I'm talking about when people have actually had affairs and the world has found out about it. People like Paul Crouch, he had no biblical right to remain in ministry. 
None. None. Jan Crouch had no biblical right to go back to ministry when she was caught in the parking lot in Orlando with that guy. None. The world knows it. But the word of God doesn't mean anything to these people. They practice lawlessness. They are not under the law of God. We must have a good reputation with those outside the church. If the world's going to lie about us, let the world lie. We should expect that. But when they can say things about us that are true, there's a problem. When such men fall into sin, it's a terrible thing for them and their family. If they repent, we need to respond with brotherly compassion and with encouragement. But they must accept the ramifications of their actions. They cannot return to ministry or leadership. Now, if somebody divorced his wife and the marriage was reconciled and they were out of ministry for a while and the ministry was reconciled and it becomes part of their testimony how the Lord healed the marriage. I don't know if I'm saying this about Charles Stanley or not. I don't know the specific circumstances of his marital situation. I just know it was a public mess. That could be different. But if there was immorality involved, having affairs, no, no. That's it. You've blown it. To those in the ministry, we remind ourselves. I remind myself. One time, one half hour with one woman, and it all goes down the drain. There was a young preacher in the UK somewhere who ran a branch of our ministry. We subsidized him to go to Bible college. He graduated <coughs> with a degree, and he was a, quite a gifted teacher of God's word. He pastored a church, and the church that had been floundering began to grow under his leadership. But the immorality got in. Do I love him? Yes. Do I forgive him? Yes. Do I feel compassion for him? Yes, but more for his family. Can he ever be in the ministry again? No. Personal evangelism, witnessing, yes. But any kind of leadership or full-time ministry, no. No, no. When people repent, they bear the fruit of repentance, and they accept the ramifications of their deeds. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you for your question.